The first of our DCF steps is to forecast the free cash flows up until the steady state period. Now that's normally for the first five or 10 years. Let's assume it's 10 years in our example. You might then ask, hang on, the company I'm trying to value, it's not going to exist just for 10 years. What about the cash flows it's going to generate from years 11 onwards? Well, if I jump to step three quickly, that's represented by the terminal value. We need to calculate this terminal value and it will represent all of those cash flows from years 11 onwards. Okay, so I've got all of these cash flows in the future. I'm now gonna ask my financiers, my debt holders and my shareholders, what kind of returns are they looking for? So I work out an average of the returns they're after, and let's say that's 10%. So if they're after a 10% return, my cash flows going into the future, up to year 10 and thereafter, must represent that 10% return. So I now take that 10%, my weighted average cost of capital, and I use that to discount those future cash flows to today. So the cash flow in a year's time, I roughly take 10% off that, and that will represent the present value of that cash flow. Once I've discounted all of those future cash flows, that gives me the enterprise value. And I then walk from the enterprise value to the implied share price using the EV equity bridge, your enterprise value to equity bridge.